Welcome back to ILTP WC, the channel that teaches you everything about home labs, computers and programming. I'm your guide to the wonderful world of programming, game development, artificial intelligence and home lab server setup. So everything amazing you can do with computers. And in this episode of ILTP WC, we are diving into an amazing topic, the artificial intelligence stable diffusion. We'll talk about what it is how to use it and even how you can set it up on your own server or personal computer. And if you don't have a powerful GPU, don't worry. We will also cover how to leverage cloud resources to work with stable diffusion. So I guess by looking to this video, you already have a glimpse what stable diffusion is capable of. Let's dive right into the topic. Let's follow me to stable diffusion. Understanding stable diffusion can be a bit tricky if you're new to the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning. But don't worry, I'm going to break it down for you. In fact, I'll explain it twice. First, I'll explain it in a way that even a 10 years old can understand. I will use simple analogies and avoid technical jargon. This will give you a high level understanding of what stable diffusion is and how it works. Then, once you have the foundation, I'll go through it again, but this time from a software developer's perspective. We will delve into the technical details and explore the underlying principles in more depth. This will give you a more comprehensive understanding of AI stable diffusion and it will equip you with the knowledge you need in order to use it in your own projects. So, whether you are a complete beginner or a seasoned developer, stick around and by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of what stable diffusion is and how it works. Imagine you are an artist with a lump of clay. You want to shape it into a statue of a cat. You start by making big changes like forming the body and the head. Then you start making smaller changes like shaping the ears and the tail. Finally, you make very tiny changes like the whiskers and the eyes. Each change brings a lump of clay closer to the looking of a cat. Now think of stable diffusion like this artist. But instead of a lump of clay, it starts with a bunch of random numbers. And instead of using hands, it uses mass to make changes to these numbers. Step by step, it transforms these numbers until they look like something real, like a picture of a cat, for example. And just like an artist, it can make many different kinds of things, like pictures of cars or dogs or even things that don't exist in real life. Stable diffusion is a type of generative model used in machine learning. It models the data distribution in a high dimensional space using a process called diffusion, which involves transforming a simple distribution into a complex one. The model starts with a prior distribution, often something simple like a multivariant Gaussian. It then applies a series of learned transformations to the distribution, each one nudging it a bit closer to the target distribution. The transformations are typically parameterized by a neural network, which is trained to learn the optimal parameters for each step. The interesting thing about diffusion models is that they perform these transformations in a stable manner. This means the transformations are designed to avoid catastrophic changes that could destabilize the learning process. Once the model is trained, it can generate new samples from learned distributions using a process known as ancestral sampling. This involves starting with a sample from the prior distribution and applying the learned transformation in reverse. Stable diffusion has been used to generate impressive results in a variety of domains, from image generation to text-to-image synthesis, showcasing its potential as a powerful tool in the generative modeling toolbox. Setting up a stable diffusion environment on your own machine can seem daunting, but with a little guidance, it's perfectly achievable. Let's break down what you'll need and I'll walk you through the process. Before we start, there are a few things you need. Stable diffusion, like many machine learning models, can be resource intensive. You'll need a machine with a decent powerful GPU. The exact requirements will depend on the size of the model you're working with and the task you would like to perform. But as a rule of thumb, more is in general better when it comes to GPU power, which in general means amount of CUDA cores available and VRAM available. We'll be using Docker to run our stable diffusion model. Docker is a platform that allows us to create, deploy and run applications in containers. This ensures our applications runs in the same environment regardless of where it's hosted, making our setup reproducible and platform independent. If you're not familiar with Docker, don't worry, I'll guide you through the whole process and the basics. With these prerequisites in mind, 
we can start setting up Stable Diffusion. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. First, you'll need to install Docker on your system if you don't have it installed already. You can download it from the official Docker website. They provide versions for various operation systems including Windows, macOS and Linux. Follow the installation instruction for the specific operation system. Once Docker is installed, we will use it to pull the Stable Diffusion Web UI Docker image. This image contains everything you need in order to run our model. The model codes, necessary libraries and dependencies. After pulling the Docker image, we can start a Docker container with that image. Type the following command. With the Docker container running, we can access a Stable Diffusion web UI from a web browser. Simply open your browser and type localhost with the port 8080 in the address bar. You should see the Stable Diffusion web UI. And there you have it. You have set up the AI Stable Diffusion on your own machine. You can now start experimenting with models, sending requests and generating output. In the following section we will explore how to use the Stable Diffusion Web UI, how to tweak the model parameters and how to integrate this powerful tool into your own applications. If you don't have a powerful GPU, don't worry, cloud resources are here to save the day. You can use services such as Azure, AWS, Google Cloud or Paperspace to spin up a virtual machine equipped with a high-end powerful GPU. These cloud providers offer various configurations that can suit your needs, whether you need a single powerful GPU or multiple GPUs, and you can select the appropriate virtual machine type. Moreover, these machines come with high-speed storage, making it convenient for handling large input files. Setting up a virtual machine involves a few steps. First, you'll need to create an account on the cloud provider of your choice. Once your account is set up, you can create a virtual machine, select the desired configuration and launch the machine. After your machine is ready, you can then install Docker and Stable Diffusion Web UI, similar to how we did it on our local machine. While this gives you full control over the setup, it requires some technical knowledge and manual setup and you also have to take security into your consideration because hosting your web application directly in the internet can be a bit tricky or risky, especially if you're not familiar with hardening servers. If you're looking for a more convenient solution, consider using a platform like OneDiffusion.com. It provides a one-click solution to run AI Stable Diffusion. All you need to do is to create an account and you can start using Stable Diffusion Web UI directly from your browser. However, note, to get a persistent storage on OneDiffusion.com, you will need a Founders Club subscription, which can be a bit pricey. But you can also host your files on another server and just provide it via HTTP. That will also work with Stable Diffusion. So, whether you are a seasoned developer comfortable with spinning up your own virtual machine or you prefer the convenience of a one-clip solution, there is a way for you to leverage the power of Stable Diffusion. Explore the options and choose the one that suits your needs best. Now that we have Stable Diffusion Web UI up and running, it's time to play around. Let's start with the text to image synthesis, which is one of the most exciting applications of AI Stable Diffusion. It allows you to generate images from text descriptions, effectively turning your words into pictures. Let's explore how to do it using the Stable Diffusion Web UI. Once you've accessed the Web UI, you will see several tabs for the different modes. Select the Text to Image tab. This mode is designed for text to image synthesis. Now you will see a field where you can enter your text prompt. This is where you describe the image you want to generate. The model will use the text as a guide for the generating the image. Try to be as descriptive as possible. The more details you provide, the better the model can understand what you are asking for. And keep in mind that you can also provide so-called negative prompts for things you don't want to have in your final image, such as ugly faces, duplicates or even errors. Next, you will see several settings that you can configure. These control various aspects of the text-to-image synthesis process. Let's take a moment to talk about some of the settings you will see in the Stable Diffusion Web UI. These may seem a bit technical, but don't worry, we'll break them down together. ControlNet is all about the architecture of the neural network our model is using. Think of this like the blueprint for a building. Just like how different blueprints result in different buildings, different architectures can yield different results. Next, we need to talk about LoRaS. This stands for Low Rank Adaption. It's a technique that helps our model to learn new concepts that weren't originally included in the training data. Imagine it like giving our model a new set of tools to create specific effects, like making better hands or faces, or even add magical spell effects to each of our pictures. Then we have the VHE settings. VHE stands for Variation Autoencoder, a fancy term for a type of neural network that's really good at generating new data. By tweaking this setting, we can influence the characteristics of the image 
our model generates. Okay, and now to all the handy sliders that you will need every day. First, the CFG scale, which is another interesting one. This parameter relates the model's configuration. Tweaking it can influence the size of the model and the complexity of the generated output. Think of it like adjusting the level of detail in a video game. More detail can make the game more realistic, but it's also required more computation power. The smaller the number of the CFG scale, the more freedom you give the AI to generate a picture. And the higher the number, the closer the AI tries to generate an image to your prompt. Okay, next is sampling steps. Sampling steps refers to the number of steps our model takes during the sampling process. Just like how a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Each step our model takes gets a little bit closer to our final picture. More steps can lead to more accurate images, but they also increase the computational requirements. Now you might also see something called a checkpoint. In machine learning, this is like a saving point in a video game. It's a snapshot of a model at a specific point in time. But to put it simple, it just defines how the output image will look like. So you have some checkpoints for realistic pictures and photos and some others for animal and cartoon characters. All right. Now let's talk about something called the sampling method. This is a really important concept when you are working with AI models like Stable Diffusion. So once our model is trained and ready to go, it has actually learned a really complex way of understanding data. You can think of this like a super complicated map that the model has drawn during the training. Now we want our model to create new samples. In our case, that's generating images from text prompts. This is where the sampling method comes in. It is like the model's way of exploring that super complicated map and deciding which location to visit. Each location it visits is a new sample it generates. Different sampling methods can lead to different kinds of samples. Some methods are like explorers who want to visit as many different locations as possible. They prioritize diversity and so they create a wide variety of samples. Other methods are like tourists who stick to the well-trodden path. They prioritize precision, creating samples that closely resemble the most common patterns in the data. In the Stable Diffusion Web UI, you have the option to choose between different sampling methods. So you can decide whether you want your model to be an explorer or a tourist, depending on what you need. There are some key settings you'll encounter in the Stable Diffusion Web UI. Understanding them will help you experiment and get the most out of your AI model. Okay, that's it for part one of AI generated content. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of ILTP WC. If you like the content, please smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you have feedback, just write it down in the comment section. Thanks a lot and goodbye.